All right, this is one of those minor talks. Uh, things that make you go, huh, I didn't know it worked that way. And I'm a big user of Microsoft Authenticator, and I really like it. And because uh, it was the first one that let me do backups and restore them on a different device and all that kind of stuff. And it turns out, you know, there are two main ways that I use it. I don't do passwords. And I don't do trusted IDs with and They keep trying to add stuff to it. Uh, I use the TOTP generated tokens and I use push notifications. And one of the things that surprised me is that there are actually three different types of push notifications in Microsoft Authenticator, at least three that I've seen. There are probably more. <clears throat> so the one on the left is the first one I ever saw, and it's the simplest. You get a push notification, and you see that little UIMYQ. It's like it expects you to so you go to a website or you go to log into some site, and it says, oh, I'm going to send a push notification. And by the way, here's the code, UIMYQ. And then I get this thing, and all I'm supposed to do is hit the approve button, right? And it assumes that I'm going to look at UMYQ, but like how many times do you do, right? So you can just hit this approve or deny, and that'll approve it, and then you either get into the other site or you don't. So like it's a federate, you know, like a IDP linking thing. Um, and so that one's pretty straightforward, and that's the only one I ever saw. And then I started to, then you started to see this other one. And... Uh, I don't know how this gets configured on the Microsoft side. There's probably a way and somebody will add a note. Um, but I don't run any of those systems. I only use them. So now what happens for a lot of the sites is I get three numbers. I thought I got four, but I get three numbers or a deny. So I have a, I'm going to have to change the blog article. I get a th one third chance of guessing which one of these. So on the other one, I just hit approve. And in this one, I basically hit approve and submit a number, and that number is supposed to match the number on the screen. So no longer do I have this weird code and I hit approve. Now I've got, hey, you need to type in, you need to press 68 on your Authenticator app. So that's you see a bunch of these. And now I see more sites that actually ask me to enter a number and they don't give me any clues, right? So the first one gives you a big clue, hit yes or no. The second one gives you one of these three numbers or no. And this one now gives you some arbitrary number of digits. You can't really tell uh, from the way it, it requests it here. But on the originating screen, it'll say, hey, uh, enter this number in the Authenticator app. It does a push to it. And then the Authenticator app, uh, when you enter this number, will talk back to the service, and then you can log in. And so the flow, this is, I threw this together, and I hope the flow police don't get me. Basically, a user goes to a website, they go to a server, the server says, man, I need credentials. Let me go to the identity provider. IDP is identity provider. The identity provider requests some credentials, uh, like a username and a password a lot of times. And then it's like, oh, man, I need to send a push notification to do MFA. So we push it, like that commercial and the song. And then some back end thing happens. I don't know what it is because I don't deal with this. And it does that push thing. Push notifications go out. They go out to your phone. And on the phone, you do one of those three things I just showed you. It does an acknowledgement that goes back to some gateway. I don't know what it is. It goes back to some other back end thing with telling you that thing will get you credentials. And then it'll say, man, we got creds. And it'll send it to this server and then that ser or service. And then that service will be like, take these creds and do this. And then the server now knows what your permissions are because you've done authentication on this side and you did authorization on the back and then boom, you're good. So that the push notification thing is a little... Not complicated, but it's, you know, it has a tighter loop, right? If you're doing the TOTP token, basically you come in here, go to the server, server says, I need cred. The IDP does the request. And all it says, puts up is, hey, what code have you got on your thing? That gets entered right here. And this whole push notification thing doesn't happen, right? <clears throat> so that's what that is. I just think it's interesting. There's three types and I got to keep this small. Uh, the last thing, so this is the flow in the picture, and I'll put this in the blog. Um, the only other thing is the push notification, uh, the token TOTP notifications. There's a, you can, um, anyway. Uh, and uh, so in this case, I've actually got the a couple sites that do enter the code generated here. These change after a certain amount of time, and so it's expected you have a device uh, that's got the code generators on them. Basically, it's a seed and a start time. And uh, once we figure that out, uh, we then use these numbers. So this is the non-push notification part. And this is three different ways uh, that you acknowledge a push notification. And that's all I got. Right? 
Don't know if anybody else has seen any other modes. If you do, I'm really curious. Have a great day.